What is going on, everybody? Hopefully you can hear me. And we're going to get started here in a minute. Let's see if anybody joins the stream. We're going to get situated here. And hopefully we have a good time. I'm going to move some of these other projects out of the way. Because what we're going to try and do is paint the owl bear. in one hour to a standard that we can sell them for like 30 bucks. I've never done this before. So it's gonna be a learning experience with each other. See if it's possible. I know it's possible to paint and sell this because I've done it twice. I sold two painted owl bears for like 30 or $40 a piece, but I never timed myself painting them. So that's what we're going to kind of work on here. We don't need these handles. Try to clean up what you guys are looking at a little bit. But that should be good. I also moved the camera, which seems like it's going to be a better view. Um, what? Oh. I'm going to put on gloves just because my skin is so white, it's reflective. <laughs> and that makes it harder for you guys to see. Inquisitor Zane in the building. <laughs> I'm going to try right now. We're going to see if it works. I'm going to give it a shot. The one hour owl bear paint job. I played with the lighting and the uh, camera a bit. And I think I got much better view that looks way clearer hopefully that's easier to look at yesterday was obviously a struggle with all that autofocus stuff all right trying to get these gloves on we got one one thing i don't fully understand though is why this camera flips everything like you can see Elmer's glues backwards and stuff. Um, it doesn't do that in the Logic Capture app. But oh well. Hopefully, at least we got the view a little better. I'm getting my gloves on here. And just while we're here, maybe we could see the Dire Avenger a little better. Kind of. Put some static grass and stuff on his base. I still got to do tufts. Got to do some tufts on his base, and then he's done. I like his purple power sword. I think it came out pretty cool. Try to get it with no light bouncing off it. Anyway, the Dire Avengers are done, more or less. Just need some tufts on their base. We're going to do an owl bear tonight. And then it's probably maybe some swooping hawks or some board game miniatures. I don't have this super planned out, but we're going to do some contrast paint. Um... Well, by super planned out, I mean, like I, I'm going to do contrast paint. And it's not going to dry that fast. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I think we might go with Gore Grunt of Fur, Black Templar, and Wildwood. And then maybe the Skeleton Horde on the chest. So we'll probably start with these four contrasts. Then I know I'm going to immediately have to start working on his claws and stuff. So I think we'll go with this uh, hammer 
fall khaki. We might switch to the wet palette. Actually, we almost 100% for sure will switch to the wet palette. And should be good. So about five minutes in, I'll probably be a little less uh, quick on the chat, but I'll be looking at it. And the goal, <clears throat> the goal will be to see what we can get done in one hour. And I'm not worried, you know, obviously it's not going to be varnished. I'm not worried if it's not uh, completely done in the one hour. But we're going to try. And I think that's about it. Probably get started. Um, I think I'm going to use the Citadel Medium Shade Brush because it's so beat up. And I'm going to be really slopping on this contrast paint. And my beat up size 6 ghost brush still has a pretty good tip. So no reason to <coughs> waste that tip on this task. i got a clean water cup. i got my glasses on. i got my gloves on. <coughs> and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get started here in a second. And we'll go see what we can get done in an hour. And hopefully <clears throat> it'll be pretty cool. So we'll just start. Think how I'm going to start this. Actually, hold on. I got to get the uh, contrast medium. Where is the? Oh, yeah. So I got the contrast medium as well. And we might put some of that in here. Actually, I will for sure put some of that in here because I know I'm going to want some of this. Uh, we'll just put it right there. And I got distilled water in my little water bottle here, so I'll put that on this one. So there we go. We got water. We got contrast medium. We got an owl bear. We got contrast paint. Yeah, I'll use this, the bigger sizes the most, too, because it helps really save the small ones. So I'm thinking if I start... With the darker areas, I think we might create some kind of lighter chest area. But uh, I think I'm going to make his kind of ends of his limbs, his arms and feet dark. And the base. Anyway, all right, we're about close to 10 minutes in, so we'll see what we get done at about an hour 10. Starting right now, so I'm going to put this on his paws. I'm going to try and do this at a pretty normal speed. Which hopefully, you know, hopefully we get a lot done in the hour. I'm not going to rush, like, at an unrealistic pace of, like, what nobody would be painting at unless they were purposely trying to do this, where they were going to see how fast they could paint something in an hour or whatever, or how much they could get done. But this stage is pretty loose. If I wasn't doing this all on camera, I probably would have airbrushed some of this, like, at least the base coat of the bear and stuff. It's actually going to take, even with this brush, I really need a bigger brush. With this brush, it's even too small to cover all this base. So we might, we might have to go an hour and a half just because it's going to take a little while to get all this in all these little nooks and crannies. And 
And we're kind of being loose, just getting it on his feet as well. We'll turn those brown eventually. But I'm purposely getting them on the feet because I want them to be darker. Uh, when you say selling bulk, do you mean like squads? Because I don't think so at all. I think selling individual D&D &D characters is the best or individual D&D &D monsters. Because when I finish this bear, I'm going to put him up for maybe 50 bucks. We'll see what he looks like when he's done. I mean, if he looks really good, I might put him up for 50 bucks. You know, and then let's say it actually took two hours to finish him. Still $25 an hour, roughly. I mean, he obviously I had to pay for him. He was like $5. But let's say you did manage to paint him and sell him for $50. Uh, he's a $5 model, so that's like a 10x versus the cost of the model. Whereas if you painted a unit of Space Marines and sold them for 10 times the price, you'd have to get $600. Which would be pretty unlikely for a unit of Space Marines. All right, I don't know if we're gonna, I mean, whatever. We'll just see how much we get done in the exact hour or whatever, which would be about an hour 10. And then we'll try to see how far we can go. And obviously this part here is just, uh, well, it could have been done much faster with an airbrush or something, but I wanted to show them from basically beginning to end on camera. If for some reason, well, the majority of them on camera, I might, we never know what he's going to look like at the end, but he might require some off camera dry brushing or touch ups. Also, I probably should have looked at what an owl's eyes look like. I kind of remember how I did the other one. So we might just do that. And then I might end up having to change them if they don't look good. Well, we're just chugging along here. And hopefully, well, the reason I'm doing this base first is because I'm hoping that this is somewhat dry and it can be so much looser that when I do this kind of fur of the bear, uh, then I can come work on the base while the fur dries a bit. We'll see. No guarantees any of this works. Make sure you like and thumbs up the video and all that good stuff. That way if people are interested in making a little extra quarantine money, we're learning a skill. Hopefully I'm keeping him on camera. I'm not checking quite as much. All right, now he's pretty much done with his base, but I got to get his upward paw as well because it's still a limb. Gabriel in the building. Yeah, I mean, sets of monster squads could be cool. Uh, oh, awesome. You just painted an owl bear. Uh, should have watched that probably would have made me actually be able to go even faster if i literally just watched somebody else do it i have painted two of these and sold them this is my third one i did a snow one and a brown one this one will be a, a brown one all right so i think that's a pretty decent roughed in uh base so we'll rinse off our brush we're beating up here. And actually, I'm going to try to pick up some of this off the base with my now fairly clean brush. And I, I'm going to use it to get his eyebrows if I can collect enough off the base here because I should have done the eyebrows and the eyes. We'll get those too. 
Plus, this is going to help. Oh, no. All right, hold on. Got to open the pot again. When you glue these, like, slate rocks onto models, they make a lot of little nooks and crannies. See the stabbing motion I'm doing? That's what kills the tip of your brush. That's why I'm not using a one of my ghost brushes that actually has a tip on it still. I'm using this GW one that's beat up. So what I'm doing really is just blocking in some color. What's your uh, Twitch channel there, Gabriel? I might have to check that out when I'm done. I'm not much on Twitch. I did sign up an account so I could watch those GW previews. But I have been thinking about getting into doing it on Twitch as well. If I could do it on Twitch and you, uh, YouTube Live simultaneously. All right, so there we go. We got his eyes kind of done. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and fill in his mouth too. We're going to want that dark, so. All right, now we're done with the black for now. Silent by Design, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Uh, also, if you can comment that, like, I don't know if you can leave a comment while it's streaming, but just in case I forget, but I'll try to remember. All right, now we're going to Wildwood. Contrast. And I'm going to use this near and over the black part of the feet and hands. We might take a little bit of the contrast medium. You saw that I just dipped my brush in contrast medium. And I'm pulling it over. This is similar to like a wet blend. Hoping the, well, the transparent brown over the black will make a darker brown. So that's the goal. Yeah, Gabriel, right now I'm trying to do a, uh, see what I can get done in one hour. And basically see if I can get start to finish by brush model done we're going to darken this in this kind of armpit area the hips the butt maybe even bring it up a little in like a line there up his back And it looks like we've been going for 10 minutes. So we got 50 minutes left. I don't think I'm going to be anywhere near done. <laughs> Just because of how long these actual base coats are going to take. But that's okay. Uh, I'm going to bring this up his back farther. So I want to get his whole butt in this dark brown. Uh, I want to get in these dark areas. I should have actually done these areas under his arms black. That way when I, oops, sorry. When I do them with the brown, they would be even darker. And there we are. This is Wildwood contrast paint from Games Workshop. Essentially what I'm doing is just blocking in colors right now. 
this dark area underneath him, we're going to get dark. Makes sense. We're also going to pull it up around his shoulder here. See that dark line I put in there? Where the fur is basically pressed together by his arm against his body. And I don't want to miss any. <laughs> He's very textured, so, you know, I got to make sure I don't miss any spots and really make sure the contrast gets in all those spots. So I'm kind of gobbing it on, which is then going to make drawing a little slower, which might prevent the one hour time frame, but that's okay. So well, let's see what we got. I'm designing and printing and uh, printing. Ah, uh, yeah. If you designed and printed like a, you know, like a, if you were going to do like squads of monsters to try to paint and sell, I would think of it as almost like D and D or RPG encounters. So if you're going to do like a squad, do like, you know, a goblin chieftain and then like three or four, you know, little minions that maybe follow him around that kind of idea that way you know they're basically buying an encounter maybe a troll and two goblins and a wolf or you know whatever thematic kind of encounters i think we're gonna pull up some of this this is kind of a just loose rough marks we're creating a just some dark spots on them maybe i'll show up later maybe i won't don't know yet. Uh, we'll get the back of his head with this dark color. And I think underneath his, I think all around his head, we might actually do this dark color right now. This is the Wildwood from Contrast Paint. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> leather face yeah the i like doing the humans and stuff too but i think this is hopefully going to be a good example of like if you could be making some extra money doing some painting on the side or full time and a model like this with not a lot of detail is a good choice um trying to this is trying to use a, a somewhat of a shadow to pick out the volumes a bit. All right, so there he is. Looking good. Oh, no, we didn't get this arm yet. It's a little nerve-wracking. Not nerve-wracking, but I do want to have something cool at the hour mark. But also, I don't want to rush it to where it'd be so unrealistic, like nobody would ever paint like that. But because of that, I might be missing some spots because I am rushing, not, not rushing, but, you know, I'm trying to be, keep the brush moving, basically. See, I can see in here, you can't see, but, well, yeah, you can, right there. Right there is white. Try to make sure. All right, I think that's going to be good. Looks like eh, we'll do a little bit more maybe with the medium on his arm up here. I think I might take it up on these shorter feathers here. Yeah, put it on the shorter feathers there where they meet the big ones. Do that on this side too. And 
There we go. So you can see kind of built in some shadow. I do want his kind of chest area to be fairly bright. All right, and that looks okay. Let him sit for one second. Um, the contrasts are pretty cool for just blocking in colors and stuff. I mean, I could have done a, if I was, I probably would have airbrushed a couple browns and then hit them with a, a dry brush and then a wash maybe if I was painting them normally. Uh, so this is Gorgrunt of Fur. I'm gonna jump into here. This is gonna be the rest of him, except for what we're gonna try to make the lightest. And we'll probably end up bringing the edge of these light, but, and this is going to mix a lot because I, but it's going to depend on basically where I've, you know, where it's still wet of the brown. If it's still wet, it'll look pretty cool because it'll mix good. Yeah, it looks pretty cool already. All right, we might get somewhere okay in a, Put a little bit there. I want his chest to be kind of light. We're going to put a little bit on him here. And maybe a little bit on his face around his eyes. Hopefully we can see that. And we'll hit this kind of triangle shape over his face. This one is Gorgrunt of Fur. It's got, it's basically like a burnt sienna. It's really nice. Highly recommend this brown. You can do a lot of good underpainting with a nice burnt sienna color. All right, so we're kind of building up. Looks like we got to do some of this. I'm using a little bit of the contrast medium. Anytime I see like a wet spot on the model that I'm about to paint into, the paints will mix, but I'm just letting the contrast medium help that. This one, well, we kind of, we didn't leave much room for the lighter feathers on that part, but that's okay. Now we're definitely using contrast medium with the Corgrunt of Fur here, because we're hoping it, we're not being too careful and we're gonna try to blend it over top of that kind of pattern we put in. I'm gonna almost highlight the tops of the round objects like his butt and calves and stuff. And that seems pretty good. All right, we're about done with this color. So you can't see it too much, but with the under painting of the darks, there is some, oh, well, actually we should probably get a little bit in this area. We don't want it to be all dark. And I don't, I think that area could be 
blend it a little better. So I'm just going to rub my brush on it. And hopefully it blends the two a little bit. And maybe there. Well, there he is. It's funny, I'm using the camera to, looking at the monitor, because, <laughs> you know, my camera bounces so much white light. I'm almost able to see the white spots on the screen better than in real life. Or it's, well, what it probably is, is I'm just seeing it from the angle of the camera, and that's a slightly different angle than what I'm looking at. I'm going to put some of that red in there. And we'll actually do some of this. And when I say red, I mean gore grunt of fur. And it looks like we're at about 20 minutes. So there he is. Looking good. Gonna rinse the brush again. Oh yeah, the Cyclops bust and Swamp Troll will be coming soon. <laughs> the uh, sculptor for the Swamp guys just finally got his order of resin so he can finish printing. So hopefully I'll have those soon. I'll have to double check on when the Cyclops is coming in. It's kind of funny. We got the little wizard here watching. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, if Zane, if you're referring to the neat idea of painting up like a d and encounters, yeah, I think that's a good way to do it. All right, we're going Skeleton Horde. Not 100% sure we're going to like this, but we're going with it. And we're just going to cover all the white spots. And probably mix it in a bit with the Gorgrunt of fur. Sorry, I need to get a little bit. Oh, that's probably a better view for you. This one's not quite, well, I don't know. When it's mixing, it's okay. It doesn't show up that good on camera. But then it's doing a little more than I think it's showing up on camera. Finish his face here. Just make sure we use kind of a lot, I guess. It's probably not the right choice here with the skeleton horde, but we're on a time limit. We can't go back now. <laughs> what I'll do if I can is if I see a wet spot from the Corgrin to fur or the wildwood, if any of that's still wet, I'll try to use that to darken my uh, skeleton horde here. Probably, I think what would have been good is actually if I maybe mix this. Although it, actually it does look pretty decent. On camera, maybe it doesn't. Well, I don't know. I guess that's up to you guys to decide. We'll see what happens when it dries. It doesn't look too bad. Maybe it was the exact right color. <laughs> and we're trying to be a little generous with it, so it might take a little while to dry, but we really want it to leave shadows. Oh, I just noticed there's a spot down there. Okay. Oh, I think that covers the bear. All right, the bear is 
blocked in pretty good. Now, I'm going to switch over to... Celestra Gray, which is my favorite gray, and the number one Ghost Dry Brush. I don't know if you can't really see the label, but this is the size one. Hopefully, we can dry brush right now. I don't think it's going to be a super success, but it's going to be on the base, so it should be okay. Try to get that on camera a little bit for everybody. And we're just dipping it in Celeste Gray, wiping it off on a paper towel. Trying to work it in. Also killing some time. Hopefully this base is dry. And we're gonna dry brush the rocks. That looks pretty good. Seemed easiest to just say everything is rock. And then maybe if we get time, we'll pick out some stuff as like dirt and mud and stuff. I'm okay with it hitting the talons of his feet. I'm okay with it hitting anything really. You can see this is a fairly large base. And I haven't even had, oh, I might hit a wet spot, which is going to ruin the dry brushing. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's a pretty large base. One loading of the ghost dry brush here. And we got the whole thing. Not too shabby. Looks pretty good. Now, only because we're trying to do some cool stuff, I'm gonna, this is, I'm losing time, but <laughs> trying to find a light blue. We'll go, we'll try this one. Uh, it's from Reaper and it is called Light Blue. Oh, I could have used this one right here in front of me. All right, this is clogged. All right, we'll try Vertigree from Game Color. This one's a little vibrant. Hopefully it's, but I'm gonna demonstrate this anyway. So we're gonna mix that in the paper towel right on top of the spot we did the uh, Celestra Gray. So hopefully if any of that Celestra Gray was still wet on the paper towel, it mixed with it. I can tell that it did. Not sure if it's on camera. That's going to just make this blend a little bit softer. This is going to be more of an intentional, like, swipe style dry brush. And I'm going to direct it at the piles of slate. And almost create, like, little... Mostly I'm doing one direction, right? So I'm going... Even when I'm doing fast, it's over, up, back, down, over, up, back, down. And I'm trying to create, like, maybe there's some light, you know, hitting those spots. Um, we're going to get right here on him. This one I'm going to go back and forth so you can see the difference. But there we go. Just couple lighter spots. Now we're going to rinse. One thing with the ghost dry brushes, they hold a lot of paint, which also means they hold a lot of water, which means you got to really wash them pretty good. Um, you can probably hear I'm sloshing away here. And I'll probably, so he's it's washed, but I'll probably go back and 
wash it with some brush soap after this. Um, so that looks pretty good for the base. I think maybe what we could do, all right, this is, this is a terrible idea. We're going to take, where is it? It's not like I have all these colors set up or anything, but I know I have that uh, Militarum green. Okay, there it is. So this is the Militarum green contrast paint. It's one of those that's getting the white chalkiness in the bottom. On uh, Duncan's new video, though, he said that's not a problem and claims that you can shake it up and it goes away. Well, I guess it did go away a little bit. <laughs> And you can hear, I do have rattle, like rattle balls in there. So this is the Militarum Green contrast paint. And we're, I'm gonna use this as basically the underpainting for where I'm gonna put some flock, if that makes sense. So between the really heavy rocky structure, so this is creating almost like a mossy, under painting and this is going to determine where i'm going to put the elmer's glue and put down some flocking material some tufts i just got over some rocks there but i'm trying to avoid the main rocks put a little bit in there and this is you know somewhat of just mapping out what I think might look cool. So we don't want him, even if he's coming out of a cave, I feel like the cave, you know, there could be some plant life. So I think that's gonna actually add a lot to our finished product. And that was contrast there. Could have used camo shade or military shade from Army Painter, Camo Shade from GW. Could have watered down any green. But keeping in this kind of transparent wash system, we've uh, been able, oh no, sorry. Uh, we've been able to keep things look pretty interesting. So I'm noticing a few spots drying white. One's right here on the side of his face. So I'm gonna just put a little Gorgrunt of fur on it. Might be the only spot I noticed actually so far. Huh? Nope. Dang. That's probably just from the... Oh, we actually got... I'm going to go back to the black. Now I'm going to go to Wildwood. Going back to Wildwood, the dark, dark brown. It looks like down in here, really, we missed. Like, oh, and behind his cheek here. Some of it might just be, uh, you know, it's pulling away and drying with white spots where maybe they weren't there normally. All right, that looks pretty good. Trying to look for any little white spots. You can't see him, but I can see him when I turn him in weird directions. Most of this is just due to the rushing of the paint job. Well, there's actually quite a bit. I'm thinking maybe the paint kind of pulled away. I didn't see this many spots when it was when I was working on it. Thinking there's a possibility the paint, when it pulled away and dried, it pulled all the way away. Which could be a combination of the Reaper Bones material, but it does have the gracier contrast on it. All right, that looks good. Now we're gonna go. What are we at here? Oh no, we're at about. 30 minutes, 34 minutes, 35 minutes. Uh, I think the next step we're gonna do is base coat 
Oh, we're going to go hammer, hall, khaki, P3. Any bone color would work. Going to go to the size six ghost brush here. This one's one that I've beat up and used on all kinds of projects. It's been around for over a year. And what we're going to do, this guy was actually missing a claw. So I kind of half, half ass sculpted one out of just some putty real quick, which is way too small. And now, unfortunately, we have to draw attention to it by painting it, but that's okay. Maybe he's just a bear that lost a claw. The, uh, P3 is, I never buy the P3 except for the black, which I like to do for the rim of the bases. It's pretty like good consistency and especially for like one coat coverage. Which is nice for what we're doing right now. Uh, Dropping brushes. Uh, it turns out we missed some spots underneath his paw here. Yeah, I'm thinking that the paint dried weird. Probably because I'm, you know, never let the paint dry and I just kept brushing and brushing. But definitely seems a little more... Uh, Kind of white spots. I think we're done with painting the base, more or less, except for maybe one more dry brush highlight on some of the rocks of a different color, maybe a pale green. So the color theory on him is basically he's kind of a reddish brown in that kind of tones. The base will have, I already knew this going in, how I was going to base it, but it'll have static grass and flock and flowers, maybe some fall leaves. And uh, so those are green. So there's a complementary color scheme of kind of a red and green with kind of red browns. Whoops, sorry. And neutral kind of green tones. This back foot is a little bit of a pain. Oh man. Might, he might end up off camera for this back foot just so I don't mess him up I'm trying to reach him. This is my fault, but I have little slate rocks right in front of his foot. So it's making it really hard to reach the toenails. If anybody's interested in buying this guy for about 50 bucks, he'll be on eBay when this is done at some point. I still, I'll varnish him and stuff and list him. All right, that looks like we got his toes done. I'm gonna go back to the Black Templar. Oh, have a good one, Gabriel. Yeah, it's almost 2 a.m. here as well. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. 
I'm gonna go back to the Black Templar and just get underneath these claws here, which we saw were somehow white again. I think actually, <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing quite a bit of white spots. So I think actually where the white spots are coming from is because of the amount of texture on this model, there's probably a few little spots here and there that the primer didn't reach, like the rattle can primer. And because of that, it's just bare bone or bare, you know, bare whiz kid rubber plastic showing maybe in those little spots. So the contrast paints like not interested at all in trying to cover those. But I think our best shot at it is just keep trying. You know, kind of gob it in there and hopefully it covers it. Yeah, I wasn't not expecting this part of, hey, the owl bear keeps showing completely unprimed surface through the contrast paint. <laughs> So that's definitely killing some of our time. And also every time I have to keep adding this wet paint onto his fur, kills the ability to dry brush him. We don't wanna dry brush him when there's wet paint or it's gonna pick it up and smear it all over. All right, well, for purposes of the video, I guess it doesn't really matter if those little white spots, I can fix those afterwards. But they are bothering me. <laughs> One more little fix here. All right. And actually, we kind of screwed up. I think I was going to use a different color to base coat his toes. But here we are. Um, I think we're going to... This color is just called Wood from Model Air. I'm going to use... It's not gonna work great, but we're gonna use it. That's a color I'd probably never buy again. <laughs> but since we got it. But it's an air paint, so it's a little bit extra transparent, but we're gonna use it to base coat his beak. Actually, it's working pretty good for his beak. Because it's transparent, we did all the wash. Oh, I keep getting, I need to remember when I'm trying to do something pretty detailed, I need to lean forward and not bring the model towards me. That way you guys can see. All right, so that looks okay for a beak color. So we'll, Put a little bit of this in his eyes too. I was honestly thinking I'd probably do the eyes first when I was originally starting the project, but totally forgot. Now we got Kind of wonky eyes. Um, 
Maybe we'll just work on the eyes for one more second. We're going to go to Averlin Sunset. This is some prime GW quality paint pot there. Look how much gunk up and stuff is glued or dried into the top of that. <laughs> uh, we're going to use one of the littler ghost brushes. We're going to mix it with a little bit of the wood. Maybe a touch of water. Hopefully we can get this in one shot. I think there was some risk there because I was actually holding on to the bear and holding on to the bear when he's wet might mean more paint got rubbed off, but we'll see. And we're going to go with coal black, which is a P3. Dark Reaper or something will be good. But it's basically just a really, really dark blue. I know we're going to screw this up, but we're going to try because we need to see how far we can get. That's not too bad. The reason we went dark blue and not black is because then we can put a wash on it maybe. Or we have room to go black in the center if we want. But mainly because this is kind of a black with a dry brush of blue. It's kind of in the blue tones. So we did a dark, dark blue. Um, I think actually to continue on that, we're going to base coat the teeth with Celestra Gray. If you remember, we dry brush the rocks with this color. Using these colors multiple times on the model, it's going to give it a little bit more coherency. And by base coat the teeth, I mean just put some little dots because this is pretty loosely, <laughs> loosely sculpted. All right. Um, now I know I want to do Agrax Earthshade on the toes. And I think we might, oh, uh, well, maybe we'll go to the makeup brush. This is just like a old makeup brush I have. And I like, it's kind of fat tip. Reminds me of like a marker, like a Sharpie. And it seems to be pretty good for putting wash on things. Could use a big, uh, size six ghost brush or something too. This isn't gonna be hard on the brush, but we're just washing the toenails and claws. Purposely using enough that it can pool around it and hopefully create a very dark shadow and especially against the base. Any 
toe that's touching the ground, we want to dark. Back here, these toes that I can't really reach, I think we're going to be just pretty loose with just trying to make sure they get washed, but not too accurate on what around it gets washed. And that was design flaw on my part. So I put too much basing material by this foot. But I wanted it to look cool, so. And actually, if the toes look a little wonky or something, we could always put a grass tuft. And that'll give it a... Kind of hide it. Kind of almost like an eraser. So there we go. We got some wash on the toes. Get this claw up here. Get underneath, and I'm going to do the beak. Hopefully it's not still wet. A little bit around his eyes. I think actually I'm going to hit his eyes too. Oh, yeah. Darken those eyes. Hopefully that's not still wet. Darken those eyes. He's looking good. Uh, we might even put a little bit of Agrax on the transition of the Skeleton Horde. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. You know what we might do is we might just go ahead and put the Agrax over all of the Skeleton Horde to get it one more layer of shadow. We're going to go back to the big... Uh, wash brush here. Yeah, we're going to do that. Skeleton Horde is now getting Agrax Earthshade did. <laughs> That's going to help really darken the shadows. Skeleton Horde does look good, but it has just a little bit, maybe too much of a jump. So using an actual traditional wash, and staining it is going to bring it down, whereas if we did a layer of, like, contrast, it would cover up too much. This will be good. Plus, like I said, we use this wash on the eyes. We use this wash on the talons, the claws. And now we're using it on his fur, his beak. It really ties everything in together. Hopefully, if there's any spots that are showing up white again, We'll be able to get those covered. Oh, just a little bit up here on his forehead. And, oh, his cheeks, too. We didn't even really do his cheeks. Those were actually cool. Maybe a little in there, too. Why not? All right, um, oh, just in case, I can't tell. So he's looking pretty good. Oh, I didn't get the uh, lower. Fill in his mouth, too. Make sure that's dark. All right. Didn't quite do the claws perfect, but that's okay. So he looks pretty good. Next up, we could, let's go with, this is a Nurgling Green. It's like been hit with the airbrush a bit. Um, we're using a really just beat up 
craft brush. This is just for teeny tiny. Uh, actually, this paint might have to go in the. No, it's got a little bit. Uh, we're going to do almost like a tap dry brush on some of these rocks. This isn't anything special. Just hoping that it makes them a little more interesting. Can't even dry brush. I think this paint is just water. Oh, there we go. I found some paint at the bottom. <laughs> there we go. It's just kind of like a, it's kind of like a wash. Just a little bit of detail on the ground. And it looks like we are almost out of time. I think I'll go ahead and finish him for the most part on camera. But obviously with the dry time of the contrast band, we couldn't finish the fur yet. But he's in a pretty good spot. Like right now we're at just under an hour. So not too sure. You know what I could do? Uh, Oh, I know what I can do. So we'll take uh, Averland Sunset. Take a little teeny tiny ghost brush. Oh, I'm dropping stuff. Maybe mix it with a little contrast medium just because it's there. And I know it's still wet. This is too much paint. Re, oh, sorry. Re putting in that kind of yellow highlight in the bottom of his eye. Trying to bring some light back into it. There we go. That has a little bit of a pop to it. And we might even take just some of that wood color that we used for the beak. And I'm just going to kind of tap it on. I want it to have kind of a texture. Visual texture, not physical texture. That's cool. We'll take the uh, hammer hull khaki. Uh, we're going to actually use it on the paper towel. You can see we're using a small ghost brush, but I don't want to totally dot it on. So we're just getting most of it kind of off on this paper towel. And we're going to tap it on. So I'm going to do it like this. See, I can kind of create a, do it a more exaggerated highlight there. So we're going to tap it along the top edges. Of each toe. This is hopefully going to create enough separation from the Agrax wash 
that we have created a successful mid-tone highlight and shadow. And we're not gonna highlight all the way back towards, kind of more towards the tip of the talons there. All right, looking pretty good. Now we might go ahead and try it, something, even though it's probably not a great idea. Hmm. Mm. Thinking of dry brushing the, uh, the bear here. I don't think he's dry enough yet, but Kind of get us within our time frame. We kind of gotta dry brush them. All right, I got stride brown in my hand, but I'm looking for potentially a, something else. Mornfang brown. Let's see. No, I think it's gonna be scrag brown. All right, here we go. Unless I, well, let me see. Hold on. All or nothing right now. <laughs> Trying to see if I have another brown I like better. Um, not sure that I really have another brown I like better. Could use bootstrap leather. All right, we're going to go for it. We're going to try a scrag brown dry brush. I'm going to get a fresh dry paper towel because I want this to be dry. That, I know that's the point of dry brushing, but when I say dry, I want it to be really dry. So I'm going to go with the 2D Ghost Dry Brush. Still looking for a potential different color. All right, if you made it this far, you can watch me ruin the model <laughs> in real time. So we are going to load up. The 2D ghost dry brush. You can see it's absorbed it. Hopefully, maybe you can see on the back of my hand. See, it's leaving a dry brush. Here we go. I'm going to start slow on the shoulder. And it doesn't... Okay, so maybe we'll go on the knuckles here. All right, we can go a little heavier. I was worried it was going to look bad. <laughs> I'm going to add more paint to it. Yeah, I actually do have a little hair dryer in the bathroom for when I had a long beard. I would have to dry my beard after I showered. But uh, yeah, I guess if I really wanted to speed through. And I'm just doing a downward dry brush. So it's not up and down, it's just down. And we're gonna get over the dark spots especially this is going to give us kind of an overall red tone to our bear and once again we've found more spots that have not been <laughs> covered in paint somehow even though i'm sure we've covered them multiple times
Make sure we get his face. Cool. That really ties them together here. And also the red highlight over the kind of, oh, sorry, I was watching the computer and not the actual model. Uh, the red highlight over the kind of black base we did on his feet and stuff, like you can see on his knuckles, kind of gives it almost like it's a dark fur, but the light bouncing off, it's still kind of the same natural tone. So there he is, looking good. And we're gonna go with the bone color. What's, what's my darkest bone color? I think we're gonna go jack bone. Could do a Ushapti bone or something. But these P3s, I kind of use them because when I run out, I'm not gonna buy new ones. I'm just using them till they're out. So I'm gonna, not even washing the brush yet, I'm just gonna switch over to Jack Bone. And we put probably way too much in our brush, so it's gonna take a minute. And I don't mind if it mixes a little bit with that Scrag Brown because this is all in the same environment and the same model. All right. You can be pretty rough on these dry brushes. Now this one's a bit of a jump because we kind of lost our highlight on the wings here. But we're gonna bring it back. Just doing one direction. So it's down, off, back, down, off, back, down. That's gonna, looks like he might be a little, oh yeah, he is. He's a little too wet on his stomach, but that's okay. A little bit more. Oh, by the way, what's up? Joe Kale, I hadn't seen you earlier. I didn't even see you were the one that mentioned the tear dryer. But yeah, that is a good idea to, especially if you're trying to speed paint. Uh, and that red dry brush, we kind of lost our highlights on our bone color, like on his face. So this dry brush is gonna bring them back. Maybe on top of his head too. Kind of create that big contrast in his face with the white kind of the bone kind of cheek fur and the bone kind of color on the top of his head. And I think, honestly, we can go one more. So we're going to keep doing the bone. I think with dry brushing, keep adding more. It keeps building up and building up, so it's kind of nice. But I lost a lot of the highlight in his kind of longer feathers. So another round. That was kind of a mistake. I went the opposite direction, but I kind of want to keep it all one direction. And that's the downward is how I'm doing it. And we'll try to get underneath there a little bit. All right, I think he's done. I mean, there's a few things we could do. This brush, the big one, takes a little bit of work to wash. But... It's worth it because the big dry brush holds a lot of paint, but you can see a lot of a lot of paints coming out. Oh, let me close this 
God. But yeah, look, there's still all kinds of, because of the amount of pigment these dry brushes hold, you really got to keep rinsing them. And unfortunately, fortunately, it's not great for speed painting, obviously, when you're, see how much paint is still coming out of this thing? I'll show you how I clean them. Take like a, a master's brush soap and you can wet it and really stir it around in here. And that loads up some soap on it. And that's going to take a little bit to rinse out, but. And while we got it out, we'll go back to the smaller dry brush and just use the soap on it too. Make sure we get any paint out. Because of the nature of dry brushing, it's hard on the brushes. And these brushes are durable. So the one thing that you're going to potentially ruin them fast with is letting paint, too much paint dry in them. So make sure you take a little extra time to clean them. It's worth it. If you're going to be rough on the tool anyway, because it's a dry brush and you get to beat it up while you use it, it's worth taking the extra time to clean it. That way it's always there for you and good condition to beat up. And uh, I didn't really have Just one problem. I don't have like my napkins or drop paper towels really set up right now for this. Or a t-shirt would actually be best. I'm going through a lot of napkins and paper towels right now, cleaning out the... So that's probably good. It's still showing a little bit of tint to it, but that could also just be the color of the paint cup, you know, the water cup. So that'd probably be fine. Uh, let's hit it with, oh, let's, FW white ink. We'll hit it on just the back of a, back of a bottle cap. Um, we need the pointiest brush we can get. We're going to use a one of the small, probably zero, double zero. Ghost brushes. Test dot on my hand. I'm going to try to hit with two dots. See if I can get it in one try. Yeah, we got it. Kind of a dot in the black and then a dot on the border of the black and the yellow. Um, that one, we just got one dot. So we'll go back and make this dot bigger. There we go. Now he's got that little sparkle in his eye. I'm gonna take Wildwood back out. And with a little brush here, I'm just gonna blob this into any crevice that I feel still not covered. So there's definitely a problem with my priming for all these completely just untouched white spots to be showing up. It won't matter once it's varnished. 
once we get that those spots covered. But we're just going to keep looking for them. It'd probably be a little easier to see if he was matte coated because, oops, sorry, he's off camera. Uh, because there's also reflections of light and the contrast paint is a little bit of a gloss tint. These little dark spots, too, are going to actually add some interest, even though we're just using them as an unplanned way to hopefully, for once and for all, correct the little white spots. They also add little interesting shadows or spots. And try to look at them from different angles. Because with all this fur and feathers, you never know where these white spots are going to be hiding. The uh, other owl bear, so I got another one to do this again. That'll be fun. We'll do another one. And this one, I think I'm going to spray him black first to guarantee that he's completely covered, no white spots, and then spray him with maybe the gray seer or whatever from GW. That way, at least if these black spots show up, they'll, or these white spots on him, they'll be black spots, which will be way more beneficial for hiding them. And I'm not going to lie, I think this came out pretty darn cool. Like, this looks pretty good. You guys on camera could watch from start to finish this whole thing being done. And it looks good. Like, I think I'm going to put them up for 50, maybe more. Could probably put them up for a little more, but and then it takes long to sell. Now I'll put him up for 50. He's 50. Once he's completely done, we're just using the wildwood to try to fix any spots that maybe are showing a little too light or for some reason Still showing white somehow. If I'm going to sell him, I got to make sure he's tip top. I don't want to sell crap. You know, the person who buys them wants a good model. And if they like them, hopefully they come back and buy another one. You know, we could probably put a little highlight on his paw. I think we'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to take a somber gray. Mix it. I think I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this wood color. That's still wet on this palette here, just to create kind of a interesting gray tone. Well, put some um, little test there and just tap it on his little paws.
Just a nice little highlight. This is all extra. It looks like right now we're at 100 or one hour, 20 minutes. But what I'm doing right now is what I would consider just nice little extra touches. I mean, obviously correcting those white spots is important it's when you're selling them. Yeah, once I take good photos of him, too, he's going to look really good. Um, I don't know if we want to – I guess we could start it. All right, yeah, let's – I'm going to take – this is that bottle cap that has the white ink on the back. I'm just going to put it there for right now. Take my Elmer's glue. I don't think, I was gonna do flock and stuff. I don't even think he needs it. I think he'll be fine with just the static grass. Take one of our beat up craft brushes. Mix it with a little water, a little Elmer's glue. I'm gonna put this all over those green spots that I washed green with the Militarum contrast. Don't have to cover every single inch. Should have probably been a little more generous with my Elmer's glue. It's not like it's expensive. I really only put out a, oh no, a little blob. I almost had a devastating mistake of putting my finger in paint. Good thing, even with the glove, I felt it. And luckily, hopefully, I didn't touch the model. I guess we'll find out as I spin it around. But All right, that should be good. Spank the owl bear. Put the static grass on, kind of sprinkling it. I don't have one of those fancy static grass, make all the grass stand up applicators. I don't even own a balloon to try that method, which I think is another method. All I have is Bank the owl bear. Ancient technique of spanking the owl bear. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Definitely could use some more there. That looks pretty good. And I'll probably put some tufts on him, but I think that's it. I think we did it. 
What do we think, Zane? Does that look good for an hour? I, I mean, it's pretty close to an hour. If we weren't, you know, some of it was chit-chatting. Some of it was just waiting for paint to dry. I feel like he came out pretty good. Maybe I'll get a matte coat on him tomorrow after I put some tufts on him. After I matte coat him, I'll double check. He doesn't have any white spots still. And then, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll put some tufts on him. Maybe I'll do that right now, actually. Uh, yeah, I'll put some tufts on him, then matte coat him, then look for... Uh, any more white spots, take some photos, and then I might change the thumbnail of this video to be him. All right, Zane, what are you feeling here? We got teal, yellow, red, purple, orange, white, pink, and blue. I'll let you pick the first flower tuft. Oh, I also have, hold on, I got more. I also have uh, white and pink. So I'll probably do a mixture of these, but. And then I got some miscellaneous different color grasses here. These are all from Shadow's Edge Miniatures. Shout out to Shadow's Edge Miniatures. I bought these, I think, on eBay or something, but I like their little flowers and stuff. All right, we're going with blue. I think blue will look good, too, because essentially he's kind of a... He's kind of blue... His eyes were kind of a dark blue. His paws are kind of a dark blue. Um, I think we're going to have to do super glue with these. I hardly ever get to use the, the big ones. I think we'll do a mix of the blue and teal. And since he's a pretty big model, I think we'll give him... We'll actually get to use some of these big ones. So I'm just going to put a dab of super glue on it. I know it's self-adhesive or whatever. And I'm going to mush it. Right into where some of that static grass is. And I think we'll hit with the medium. And I'm gonna try to stick it. Oh yeah, I got some blue flowers on his base. We'll stick a teal one. Maybe just a little teal one near this kind of back foot area. Uh, uh. Cool. Got some tufts. Maybe, maybe one little red one too. No, no, we'll do one little yellow one. Just cause maybe it'll help tie in his beak. Try to use wherever it looks like an actual kind of nook and cranny to stick the tuft. Well, I got some, uh, I'm gonna use some of those little grass tufts too. Now, if you're gonna sell stuff on eBay, I think there's no limit to how much you could really, actually I have something I could put on them rock too. 
I think there's no limit to how much you could really go all out with grass and um let's see we got a whole bunch here kind of like this yellow kind of grass that stands out kind of nice let's see find a spot for that Yeah, maybe there's some grass growing out of the rocky area here. I kind of try to mush it down with my finger. Could use like... Two, or not toothpicks, but whatchamacallit, tweezers. Try to put a little up here in this little pile of rocks. All right, this one we might have to get the tweezers for. <laughs> All right, I got tweezers. All right, I definitely just got super glue on my glove. Oh yeah, stuck it in there. Cool. All right, and then now because we're crazy, I've actually made little fall leaves. So I might put a couple of those in there too. And I think he's ready for a matte, ultra matte finish. Actually, what we'll do? Maybe we'll try out the AK gloss. And then hit them with the mat to see how that works. Because I do think that's going to be a more protective way to do it. So I got two colors of leaves. I make these. So I made kind of redder ones and kind of yellower ones. These kind of yellower ones were made with coffee filter. These kind of red ones were made with paper. Paper is definitely the way to go. And what I do is I got these cards, post, not postcards, but you know, whatever they're called. Four by five or four by eight. I don't know what the heck they, what the heck are these called? Note cards, I guess. But it, I'll spray them with an airbrush in different patterns of a color. And then I use the little little uh, let me grab it. The little green stuff world leaf press. And you put it in there, and you can punch out little leaves. Now, the coffee filter has kind of a natural, more natural texture, but it clogs that little press over and over again. Like you get four leaves, and then it clogs. And then you got to unjam it. So just using paper is the way to go, I think. Um. Well, just put some glue on him. I'm going to use the tweezers here. These are kind of a pain to work with. You always wonder if they're gonna stay on. <laughs> we'll do a couple red ones too, just.
That's cool. Anyway, the, it's not even really like if it looks boring or not. It's more just like overloading. Oh. Trying to load the senses, basically. Maybe I'll do one more red one. The red ones look a little less natural. I think it's because it's paper instead of coffee filter. But that's okay. He's also a half bear, half owl. So that's not really natural either. There we go. I think that's good. Now he's coming straight at you from the forest. Looking like a looking like 50 bucks. After all those leaves, I feel like he might be 60 bucks. <laughs> um, what else do we got? I think that's about it. Oh, there's one more thing we could do right now just to officially say we finished him, and that would be paint the rim of his base. Oh, I spilled all my contrast medium when I was doing that. Get that cleaned up. Flipped my little palette. When you're using super glue, always be careful. One touch of super glue and your paintbrush is ruined. Um, I think we can just go with the size six ghost brush for this. Probably should have went with actually a less pointy brush, like one of those kind of short, fat makeup brushes, because this is such a thin rim of a base. And once again, I probably could have done two of these at about the exact same speed as one because some of that time while I was just waiting for stuff to dry could have been used to work on another one. And then it would be, if they both sold, like $100 an hour or whatever. I know we've overshot the hour, but. And I think he's done, but just maybe for one final touch. This might be a mistake. Gonna try to get 
one of the more pointy ghost brushes I have. This one's pointy. Um, this might be too yellow. Gonna mix a little bit of that wood color that we still have wet on the palette. I guess that was one advantage of it being a air paint, <laughs> is it stayed wet this whole time. Maybe some of that contrast medium water. And let's get a thin line. And we're just gonna put it on the opposite. corner of his eyes. Oh my God. Trying to put that little bit of extra yellow into his eyes, give him a little bit more life. There we go. That looks good. All right. It looks like we're done. I think he's done, start to finish. I don't think I've ever done that before. I'm pretty excited. I don't know if I've ever, ever, well, maybe on some of those board game miniatures where I was, uh, I'm gonna take my gloves off because my hands are sweaty. Uh, some of those board game miniatures where I'm really just speed painting them just to get them done. And they're monsters with just different color meat and skin and fleshy stuff and I didn't even base them but uh I don't think I've ever just taken a model and start to finish from you know obviously he was primed already and stuff but uh I don't think I've ever done that so that's pretty cool I've been watching you know some James Wapple and stuff like that and he does it every night, basically paints a full high detail model in a couple hours, more or less, you know, from primed like I did to finished base. And I was curious, it looked like a fun way to paint. And it looked like a good strategy. I mean, if you're getting one model done a night for your army, if you're, you know, trying to do that, that could definitely be an increase in speed for a lot of people, I'm sure. Looks like get a couple of these paints put away. Yeah, and then uh, coming up, we got Swooping Hawks. This view with the camera set up like this, actually, you can see what I'm working on. So that's exciting. Obviously, I'm sure I went out of frame probably more than I should, but still learning. Uh, we got this guy. I'm going to paint this guy. He's going to be a kind of a one-hour speed paint attempt. Looks like, I mean, we total run time is one hour and 54 minutes. And some of this that we worked on, you know, at the end was just whatever, a little extra here and there. Oh, we'll try this. We'll try that. But uh, I don't think we were too far off from the hour, really. Definitely... If we didn't have to keep going back and filling in little <laughs> white spots that kept the fur wet, I could have approached dry brushing that a little sooner. 
But I think he looks good. I think the Browns all worked well together. To recap, if anybody's still watching, we started with the Black Templar. This is talking to the YouTube audience. Obviously, you're probably still there, Zane. But <laughs> we went uh, Black Templar, and then we did Wildwood Contrast, Gore Grunt of Fur, and then Skeleton Horde. And then we did a dry brush of Scrag Brown and a dry brush of Jack Bone. Some Agrax Earthshade. Pretty good. Did some couple different colors on the rocks. Even got the black rim painted. Now, hopefully, this super glue, I super glued them to the top of this lid. Hopefully, there's no damage done to them when I try to get them off. And I glued them pretty good because I really wanted a big handle to hold on to while I did this. And his base was too big for my uh, GW handle. So I wanted to make sure he was really uh, secure. The only thing I wish I could figure out, and I'm going to try something, but uh, it would be nice if it wasn't flipped, right? Because everything's backwards. Like my hands, I'm left-handed, but it looks like I'm right-handed on stream right now. So that's unfortunate, but we'll try to fix that. Maybe if I go into the Logitech app, and the only reason I think this might be possible, if I go to the Logitech app and flip it, maybe it'll be flipped on here back to normal, even though it'll look wrong on the Logitech app. But then the... Uh, it's normal for you? Really? This isn't backwards. Tell me if that's backwards or not. I'm losing my mind. It's definitely 100% backwards on my screen. I don't know. Heck, I guess I don't have to do anything if it's normal. That's normal. Okay. Never mind that. <laughs> that's so weird then it shows me it's backwards. Maybe that's some kind of filmmaking thing. I don't know. I don't know anything about cameras. Is there some advantage why I would see it backwards and you guys would see it forwards? I don't know. Another thing you could do, um, I could actually take like Agrax Earthshade and put it onto the tufts and the static grass and stuff to try to blend it in a little better if I was going for like a realism diorama. But I like it, I like it just popping out like that. It looks cool. Well, that's pretty funny that the uh, <laughs> it's clearly backwards and then it's just correct to everybody else but me. It's just some cruel joke GW's playing on me. I'm excited with this setup too because maybe I have the possibility of filming like uh, shorter, you know, painting technique type videos like, you know, how to dry brush some rocks or whatever. So that would be cool. And hopefully people enjoy this one and go back and give it a watch. I know a lot of times these streams aren't big for... Oh, I must have missed it. I was trying to... This one I didn't get to pay as much attention on the chat. And actually it looks like somebody said some, something about the tufts. Oh. Do these tear like army painter tufts? Um, they almost seem like they're just grass stuff glued to like a little kind of, uh, almost like hot glue blob kind of style. You could cut them up smaller, but they come with quite a bit of different, uh, different kinds. This guy might be fun too to try to speed paint the wizard once I get him based. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's do uh, some quick math here. Assuming that that little bear sells for $50, we'll say that's a $40 profit after shipping an eBay fee. 
And if we did that 365 days a year, that'd be an extra $14,600. So if you painted one of these every day and sold it for $50, you'd have an extra almost $15,000 at the end of the year. Now, obviously, I <laughs> after painting that, I'm not super like, oh, let me jump in and start working on some more stuff. I usually, if I finish a project, I kind of call it a night. So... Yeah, these ones are self-adhesive too, but I use super glue just in case. They're, uh, I've had them for a couple of years too. I don't, so I, you know, they might dry out. I'm not sure. But I like using super glue just to make sure they're going to stay on from any normal use. Hmm. I'm going to say I'm pretty happy with that. I think he looks really, like he looks really good in real life, but he looks really cool on camera too. Like I think the colors are, even the colors of the stream seem pretty good tonight. And I think the uh, white balance is like auto. I don't even understand. I'm not even doing anything with this camera. And it's like adjusting the white balance. I'm glad the auto focus stopped, but he seems way more in focus than they normally do. <laughs> I don't know, whatever happened... It was good. Somehow, constantly wanting to destroy my camera made it afraid and decided it was going to start working a little better. And I still haven't upgraded to the nicer, bigger camera. Although, when we do that, I'd have to probably reset it up. But I mean, looking at the colors on my computer screen, the... Uh, AK Interactive bottle looks a little blown out as far as it being too white, but the yellow on it looks pretty accurate to real life. So colors look pretty accurate. I know it's hard to see his eyes. Ah, he seems pretty good and focused there. And actually the real magic's gonna happen when I matte coat him. Like the matte coat always just makes everything pop, like all the pattern and everything. Because right now, contrast paint and stuff has kind of a glossy uh, finish to it. So once I hit them with the old Magic AK Interactive Ultra Matte, well, I'll do what I said. I'll actually test out the glossy first to like give him a protective coat. And then I'll uh, hit him with the ultra mat to mat him down and hopefully that makes everything stay safe. Yeah, it's about three o'clock in the morning. Ooh, I'm pretty pumped. I was gonna say, I don't think I wanna start another project just yet, but. <laughs> Just look at these, see if we can get them in good focus. Oh, yeah, those are some good. Actually, ooh, when I matte coat the bear, I can matte coat my Dire Avengers, too. There's still a few things I probably should clean up on them. Not all of them, but some of their little, some of them have kind of rough tabards. But, uh, so when I spray the bear with the matte coat, I'll definitely spray them with the matte coat and actually see what they really are going to end up looking like. Well, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Painting for the rest of the night. I wonder what I should do for the next owl bear. So since I got this guy ready, I'm going to prime him. Maybe tonight I'll spray him black outside on the patio. But uh, do we want to go with like a forest bear again or different browns? I've done a snow one before. Could try that again. I never tried that on a speed paint one. 
Although, well, I don't know how I would do that with the kind of black under painting. Got the, uh, could go like a black bear. Can be hard to make that interesting. Like a black and gray bear instead of a brown and red brown bone color bear. Or we could, I don't know, maybe if I get him prepped every night until I have 10,000 subscribers, I'll <laughs> paint an owl bear. <laughs> Actually, with this setup, too, it could be cool. I don't have any plans to enter, like, a painting competition or anything soon. But I do have uh, Dracula here. So that could be something that could be fun to work on on stream. Or, I don't know, probably just... Well, when the Dire Avengers are finished, I think, honestly, maybe working on the Swooping Hawks. A swamp owl bear? That could be cool. I wonder. Uh, yeah, maybe like a. That could be cool. Hopefully, I remember when I actually started. Maybe like a. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like a green brown kind of color scheme. Kind of the uh, dark. Like if I did the same kind of fur pattern as say this guy, all the. Darker browns would be like darker greens. And then maybe the lighter colors on this guy would be like the lighter browns on the green guy. It could be kind of interesting. Let me uh, grab the Swamp Troll. Yeah, so we got the, this was the swamp mini I painted, the swamp troll. He's kind of a green and brown palette. This little wizard looking at me, I think he'd be a good choice. I actually also have two of these little halfling cooks. I guess it's too bright to see them. I have, oh, there you go. So I have one of him on a square base and one of him on a round base. So could do that, like uh, the double halfling, <laughs> paint two halflings at the same time. That could be fun. And they could be the, I actually have painted, he's a $3 Reaper Bones model. And I think the one I painted and sold in the past sold for like 30 or $32. Oh yeah, the raccoon one would be really good. Like a black, white, gray kind of thing. That sounds cool too. Maybe I'll do them both. I don't think I have another owl bear, but Maybe I'll try the swamp one because that one would be so just wacky. But I think a raccoon looking one would actually look really, really good. But I'll have to probably wait until the uh, game stores open back up. When we show people how to really make money, the secret is these gelatinous cubes. 
I mean, I sold one of these for 30 bucks painted. You can do it with an airbrush very quick. I got two of them. I got a couple of these little, like, I think these guys are from Song Ice and Fire. I should probably finish these guys up and get these uh, listed for just, like, RPG NPCs. And I got, this guy's really cool. Try not to knock anything over while I grab them. But, dun, dun, dun. The giant cockatrice. All primed. Ready to go. He is definitely a monster I'm painting for selling. But he looks fun. And actually, he's mostly skin and feathers. He's got this kind of cool, almost like rat textures tail like hairless rat tail plus feathers so these owl bears are could be kind of like practice for him so he's also from the halfling kickstarter i think he's a i mean i do plan on selling him but i do think he's a really cool model i just don't think i need him for anything for my own <laughs> Like, if I had a reason to keep him, I don't know. He might be one I paint up and leave on my to-sell shelf but never list him for a while. Just look at him. Oh, and I got the Eldar Farce here. He would be fun to see what we could get done in, like, an hour. If you made a comment that got blocked, whatever it was, it must have been so bad because it doesn't even it doesn't even show it to me. I don't even see it. Usually I can see them, even though it says they were blocked out. <laughs> so whatever you said was extra extra rough for YouTube. Oh, oh that one says held for review. Yeah, that, okay, that one, I guess it's the first time it said no, and then you did it again, and it figures it's okay. <laughs> well, I think that's about it. I might figure out, I might hit up the airbrush and prime up some stuff, so I'll probably end up shutting down the stream. We'll hopefully get something for tomorrow. This is kind of a good, uh, I think this is probably a good habit to at least be painting for an hour or so a night. If for some reason I get uh, inspired, maybe I'll fire up the stream again, but it's three. So if I get these guys varnished and maybe a uh, model primed, I don't know. I've been trying to go to bed at like five. <laughs> so that's in two hours. Or, you know, at least be in bed at five. So that's probably it for tonight. But I think I will have to talk to you tomorrow and we'll have hopefully something going on whether that be starting a new project or finishing up something and all right thank you so much for watching <laughs> uh put on a documentary on youtube check out harold balder on youtube I'll type it in. Check out Harold Balder on YouTube if you like 
I don't know. I never liked travel vlogs or anything until I came across this guy and he's pretty funny and he's oh, like right now he's stuck in Sri Lanka because of the quarantine and stuff. So it's been pretty entertaining <laughs> watching that guy. So there you go. That's your motivation. If you feel like watching some travel vlogger, <laughs> he's fairly funny. He's been all over to cool places. So, all right, man, have a good night. Uh, hopefully I can get this guy matte coated and change the thumbnail to this video and get a million views. <laughs> Talk to you uh, tomorrow. Adios.